Here we are, the very last chapter of Frindle. And the winner is chapter 15. 10 years later, Nick Allen was a junior in college. And during November of the junior year, two important things happened. First, Nick turned 21 years old and the Frindle Trust Fund set up by his father became legally Nick's. Nick was rich. Nick was very rich. Nick was so rich, he couldn't even begin to imagine how rich he really was. Nick wanted to give his parents some of the money, which they said they did not need and would not accept. But Nick reminded them that they had always wanted to travel, and they should think of this as a big birthday present or something. So they gladly accepted. Could you imagine inventing a word and then suddenly being rich when you become an adult? And Nick also wanted to give some money to his big brother, James, who said he did not need it and would not accept it. But Nick reminded James that his two-year-old daughter would grow up and go to college someday. And besides, hadn't James once given Nick his whole baseball card collection? So James accepted the gift. And after that, Nick went out and bought himself a fast new computer and about 10 new games and a mountain bike. And... Then he tried to forget about the money, which is a hard thing to do, but he managed pretty well and kept working on his college degree as hard as ever. The second important thing that fall was the arrival of a package at the door of Nick's apartment one day. It was a large, heavy package. It was from Miss Granger. There were three things in the package, a brand new eighth edition Webster's College Dictionary, a short handwritten note taped to the cover of the dictionary and a fat white envelope and turning the white envelope over Nick saw the name his name that he had written that one September af afternoon in Mrs. Granger's room after school 10 years ago Nick set the envelope down and gently peeled the note off the front of the dictionary and it said my dear Nicholas please turn to page 541 of this book. Nick grabbed the dictionary and leafed to page 541 and his heart pounded because there between frimmel and fringe he read the word frindle, noun, a device used to write or make marks with ink, arbitrary coinage, originated by Nicholas Allen, America, 1987. Nick went back to the note from Mrs. Granger. This is a brand new dictionary, Nicholas. The one I recommend that my students use for their homework. And now, when I teach them how new words are added to the dictionary, I'll tell each and every one of them to look up the word frindle. And of course, I have sent along that letter I promised to give you when our little battle was over. And now it's over. Your teacher... Signed, Mrs. Lorelei Granger. Oh, hold on. I lost my place. Hmm. Nick's head was spinning. He couldn't believe it. With his shake, shake, shaking hands, he opened the fat white envelope and he pulled out the 10-year-old letter and began to read, read it from Miss Granger. It read, Dear Nicholas, if you read in this letter, it means that the word frindle has been added to the dictionary. Congratulations. A person can watch the sun rise, but he cannot slow it down or stop it to make it go for backward. And what is that is what I was trying to do with your word. At first I was angry. I admit that. I was not happy to see the word pin pushed aside as if it did not matter. But I guess that if the Latin word for feather had be been frindilius instead of pinna, then you probably would have invented the word pin instead. Like the sunrise, some things just have to happen, and all, all you can really do is just watch. 
The word frindle has existed for less than three weeks. I now see that this is the kind of chance that a teacher hopes for and dreams about. A chance to see bright young students take an idea they have learned in a boring old classroom and put it to real world test in their own world. I confess that I'm very excited to see how it all turns out. I am mostly here to watch it happen. I somehow I think I have a small part to play in this little drama. I've chosen to be the villain. Every good story needs a bad guy, don't you know? <laughs> so someday I will be asking you to forgive me, and I hope you will. Nick, I know that when you think, I know you like to think, please think about this. When I started teaching, no one had landed on the moon. And there was no such thing as space shuttles or CNN or weather satellites. There was no video cassette recorders or CD players or CDs or, or, or computers. The world has changed in a million times over since then. And that's why I've always tried to teach children something that would be useful no matter what. So many things have come out of date, but after all these years, words are still very important. Words are still needed by everyone. Words are used to think with, to write with, to dream with, to hope and pray with. And that is why I love the dictionary. It endures, it works, and as you now know, it also changes and grows. Again, congratulations, and I've enclosed a little present for you, yours truly, Mrs. Granger. Nick remembered Mrs. Granger's eyes, and now he understood that some of those special looks, what they meant. That old fox. She had been rooting for Frindle the whole entire time, and he didn't even know it. By fighting against it, she was actually helping it along. There was a flat, a blown case in the white envelope. The kind of case you get when you buy a watch. So Nick pulled it out and opened the lid, and inside there was something else. Nick had not seen this for ten years. It was Mrs. Granger's favorite pen. Her old maroon fountain pen with the blue cap. And under the clip was a little folded piece of paper. It was another note, a very short note. And it just had one little word on it. The word Frindle. About a month later, something happened over in the old part of Westfield. Over where the trees were huge and the houses were small, on Christmas morning, Mrs. Granger's doorbell rang. And Mrs. Granger opened the door, but no one was there. Someone had left a package inside her storm door, a box wrapped in green paper with a red bow and a white envelope taped to one end, and she smiled as she stooped, stooped, stooped down to pick it up. As she picked up the package, she noticed a red, white, and blue express mail envelope sticking halfway out of the mailbox next to the door. It must have been delivered late on Christmas Eve. She opened the storm door, plucked the envelope from the mailbox, Here's a picture. I don't know if you can see it or not here. It says Frindle at the bottom of that picture. He shut both door, then then shut both doors and went inside with a shiver. Mrs. Granger went across the living room and sat on the couch. The express envelope was from the Westfield School District office. It looked important, so Miss Granger opened it right away. It was a letter from the superintendent of schools, a letter of congratulations. A permanent trust fund for college scholarships had been established with a donation of $1 million from one of your former students, it read. <laughs> it would be called the Lorelei Granger Students Fund. Mrs. Granger was sure it was a mistake, or maybe if it was a prank, a million dollars. Who has that kind of money? M nonsense. She had the urge to pick up the telephone and give the superintendent a call and straighten this thing right away. But this was Christmas morning, and even though the superintendent was one of her former pupils, Miss Granger decided to wait a day. It couldn't hurt, right? Besides, the other package was sitting next to her on the couch, patiently, Im waiting impatiently with his red bow. She opened the envelope first. It was a little Christmas card with a sloppy little note, obviously the work of a fifth grade boy it said dear mrs granger you are one of my favorite teachers here is something i want you to have sincerely 
a student of yours. Mrs. Granger glared at the spelling mistakes and then chuckled and shook her head. Kids are always the same year after year. Here she was in her 45th year of teaching. My goodness. Here she was in her 45th year of teaching, all set to retire in June. She could hardly remember Christmas Day when she didn't have a present from one of her students. Mrs. Granger pulled off the red ribbon and tore off the paper and lifted the lid of the box, and she expected to find something made out of yarn or popsicle sticks or maybe even a curly macaroni and glue necklace or something. But instead, she found an oblong case covered with blue velvet. She opened the case, and inside was a beautiful gold fountain pen. She picked it up, and it was cool and heavy in her hand. Words were engraved along the pen's shiny barrel, and Mrs. Granger had to slide down to the end of the couch and turn on her reading lamp. Because there she could read the three thin lines of type. It read, This object belongs to Mrs. Lorelei Granger, and she may call it any name she chooses. With love, from Nicholas Allen. And that is the end of Frendel. Wasn't that a fun story? Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'll, I will still share books from time to time, probably just picture books or just short books and put on here. I hope that you will watch them and please comment. Let me know how you're doing because this teacher really misses or misses you guys so much. Um, this summer, if um, this, um, you know, distance, we, all this quarantine is over. If it is over by the summer, then, um, I'm going to be, uh, acting in the Trail of the Lonesome Pine again. I just got word the other day that I'm going to be playing the part of Mammy. And so if you ever get a chance, if we finally are able to get out and be around people, which I, I miss just going out to to go to a Chinese restaurant or, or go out with my family. If you get a chance and you and your family can come and see uh, me and Miss McElroy, she'll also be in the play, engage. Um, if you get a chance to come see the Trail of the Lonesome Pine, hopefully, crossing my fingers, that'll happen. Um, but until then, please stay safe. And